Once you have started choosing hope in your healing journey as an adult child of divorce, what guidelines do you need to follow? That's what we're going to be talking about on today's episode of Heart in a Drawer, the podcast for adult children of divorce. I am your host, Sarah Geringer, and I'm so glad to be back with you today in part two of our discussion on this book, Hope Anyway, by Leanna Tankersley. I hope that you were able to catch part one of this discussion. I think that this is one of my favorite books that I've read in 2021 out of over 100 books I'm on pace to read this year. So that's high praise. And it's so helpful for us in this journey of healing. So last time I talked about a few favorite quotes I had, and I have several more to share with you today. I just want to cover a couple basics before we get started. First of all, I wanted to remind you that this podcast is in no way intended to replace or uh, be a step in for professional or medical help that you might need. Instead, it is a supplement to the therapy that I encourage you to seek. And I'm leaving a link on every episode to a free consultation that I tried myself years ago and it led me on a healing journey and it was free to start out. So I encourage you to check that out. And also a reminder that I have rewards for you on my Patreon account where you can access the worksheet for this episode. And I encourage you to check that out. So let's get started in our look at uh, some more wonderful quotes from Hope Anyway. You can see on YouTube, I've got tons of markers in here because there's lots of great things to digest. So first, she talks about whose responsibility it is to do this search, do this internal inventory. She says, it is not someone else's responsibility to search my heart. It is not my responsibility to search someone else's heart. It is my responsibility to search my own heart. So this reminds me of one of the verses that we've looked at before from Psalm 139. When David is writing a prayer to God and he says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and find any anxious way within me. Our search, our search for hope, our search for healing is really an individual path, but we don't have to walk that alone. We walk that with the Lord. And I just wanted to point out, I don't think I've ever said this on another episode, that you might be the only one on this search in your family. I was that way for a long time. And that can feel really lonely and isolating when you are the one who's trying to get healthy, who's trying to break the strongholds of the past, who's trying to get past the mess of the divorce and, and choose a path that God wants you to walk, but nobody else is taking that yet. And I know what that's like in Around 2006, 2007, I read the book Boundaries and I started setting boundaries in my family. We were really the only ones who did that. But I can say to you today, the only regret I have is not doing that sooner, not making that choice sooner for my own good, for my own health and benefit. And I wish I had learned sooner that everybody's on their own pace in this healing journey and my healing journey is not going to look like someone else's in the family and that's okay the main thing that i need to focus on is my own walk with the lord and my own intent to get healthy and i think that's the word i'm supposed to share with you today so let me go to the second quote i want to cover with you it's actually Three questions that she poses that I thought were really uh, interesting in this healing journey of finding hope along this journey. She says, sometimes it's easier and clearer to have the guardrails determined for us 
and it's harder to have to do the work of discerning our own desires and preferences. It's scary to open ourselves up to the vulnerability of hope and desire. It's scary to open ourselves up to regret. It's scary to welcome possibility. Ask yourself a few illuminating questions. Number one, what do I never regret? Number two, what do I sometimes regret? And number three, what do I always regret? So I'm gonna get really honest with you and answer those questions in this journey as an adult child of divorce. What do I never regret? I never regret pouring in to my own family, learning from the lessons that I've experienced, negative and positive, and taking positive and pouring that forward. I never regret that. What do I sometimes regret? Sometimes I don't speak up when I should. And I can look back on other times that I've experienced of conflict and drama, and I wish I had spoken up mostly just for my own self-worth. So sometimes I regret that, but not always, because sometimes it's wiser to just keep your mouth shut. We're gonna be looking at some of those episodes on conflict as the holidays approach this year, so stay tuned. What do I always regret? I can tell you I always regret letting bitterness sink in. Bitterness changes me into the worst version of myself. So I have to constantly work at forgiving and letting go of past offenses and staying in the present instead of dwelling in the past. So I always regret letting that bitterness take hold of me. And I think that focusing on hope, as vulnerable and scary as that can be, it, it draws me out of that temptation to be bitter about what's happened to me. So I hope that inspires you. So let me move on to the third thing I want to bring out of this reading today. She quotes another uh, author who talks about three illusions that we're all protecting in our lives and that others help us protect too. So I want you to think about these. Number one, we can construct a life that will keep us from vulnerability. Number two, we can construct a life that will keep us from heartbreak. Number three, we can construct a plan that will allow us to see the entire path. So I would think that you are here today because you are giving up on trying to construct worlds that have no vulnerability and no heartbreak. You've already experienced heartbreak as a child of divorce. And if you are in Gen Z or younger, you are craving vulnerability. I know this myself. I'm a Gen Xer, and Gen Xers, Millennials, and Gen Z all are seeking vulnerability. And I think that you're here because you want to construct a plan that will allow you to see the entire path. I don't think that you'd be here listening to this if you didn't want a different path for your own future, your own family, if you didn't want to see a landscape further than you could at the time that your parents divorced. So I'm glad that you're here doing that work and I'm here to walk alongside you as you do it. And I'm so grateful for you. So let me get to the next point that she talks about. And this is, this is a tough one for me. Maybe it's a tough one for you. She says, if you've had to say goodbye to something, I hope you've been able to find a way to bring the good of it with you too. I know it might seem simpler to just completely eliminate the past, but I think life calls for a bit more nuance than that. So she spends a good chunk of this book developing this concept about saying goodbye, but valuing the good in something. I, in my personality type, I tend to think in black and white terms, especially when I'm stressed or triggered, of something as all good or all bad. And maybe you fall into that kind of thinking yourself. 
And I think when you're in that mode of thinking, it's easier to just say it was all bad. And part of my growth process is having to look honestly at the past, at the trauma that I experienced and the fallout of my parents' divorce and pick out things that were good, even if it was just one or 2% good, what can I value that's good about that? Sometimes the only good that I've been able to squeeze out of these situations is learning how not to do things in my own family. I'm being just really honest with you on that. But that has been a good growth process for me because I hate goodbyes as a child of divorce. I think maybe we need to talk about that in one of these episodes. But if we can say goodbye and acknowledge the good, I think that we can choose hope inside of that. And that's something I've I've worked on, something I'm still working on, and maybe that you need encouragement to keep working on that as well. So finally, I want to uh, talk about this uh, point that she makes kind of late in the book. She says, it's absolutely okay to nourish and nurture your true self and not have to do any explaining. So I want to tell you something that I've learned from doing this podcast now for just about a year. It has been difficult to face um, to face some kind of pushback for doing this, and it's been really hard. But I think one of the best things about becoming an adult is you don't have to explain yourself anymore. That's what children do. If you can nourish and nurture your true self by going on a healing journey, by saying that you're worth it because you're a child of God and you deserve love, you deserve attention, you deserve healing because you are his child and because he wants to give it to you. I think if you can get in that place and then you can surround yourself with people who are affirming those values in you, that's when you can start taking this journey with true confidence and courage. It's just too hard to get to this point in this quote if you're still stuck in the codependency, in the drama, in in all the toxic relationships. You have to move out of that and that takes a lot of courage. It takes a lot of prayer and a lot of guidance to get to that point. But when you do, you can step in to the full identity that God has for you. And so that's why the pushback that I've received has not affected me nearly as much as it would have 10 years ago, 15 years ago, because I've come to a healing place. I've come to a healed place where I know that I'm doing this for the benefit of others. I'm speaking to others who are not as far along the path as I am, and I'm trying to encourage you to just keep going. And you know, it might be God's will for you someday to sit in the seat where I am, encouraging somebody else whose parents have gotten divorced, who maybe have never explored how much the divorce had an impact on them, and you might be able to speak into someone else's life as well. So I want to empower you in that and affirm you in that and just say, whatever forward step you're taking today matters to God because you're stepping into that identity in Christ that he has for you. And that might be completely separate from the kind of identity that you grew up with as a child of divorce. So... I know I just packed a lot into this uh, podcast and I encourage you to go to the show notes, not only to order your own copy of this incredible book by Leanna Tankersley, but to check out that worksheet I have available for you and also listen to any past episodes that you might have missed, especially the ones where I I laid the groundwork for what I say in this podcast. 
uh, that could really help you if you've just joined me as a new listener. So I have one favor to ask you before I close in prayer. I am asking you to help me grow this podcast by you sharing this with at least one or two friends who you know are children of divorce. Now, I know that you know someone in this category, someone who's looking for healing and may have not seen themselves in that particular lens before. But word of mouth is still the very most effective marketing tool. So I'm asking you to text someone, email someone, send them a message on a social email or social media, and just encourage them to listen to this. If it has blessed you, please pass it on so it can bless someone else. So let me close with prayer today. Father God, I just thank you for being the Lord of hope, the Lord who spreads the banner of hope over our lives as adult children of divorce, Lord, and you have a plan and purpose for us that transcends our hurts and it transcends our struggle and our trauma and our trials. And we can choose it, Lord, if we walk on this healing journey with you and not just with you, Lord, but with the people that you've put here in our paths to help us, whether that's a support group or a Christian counselor or a pastor, Lord, help us avail ourselves to that kind of help in our lives so that we can really see growth in our healing path. And I just thank you, Lord, for every person who is listening, who is watching, I ask you to put your hand of blessing and peace and favor on them and may you look upon them with your face shining on them and give them your perfect peace that passes all understanding. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I hope you'll join me next week. I'm going to be looking at a new book that I'm reading that is really changing how I see everything and I can't wait to share it with you. So until next week, God's blessings and peace on you. Bye-bye.